been this time of year, I like to come out of the closet, so to speak. <laughs> no, not that kind of closet. I know what you're thinking. <laughs> no, that's not what I mean. <laughs> but I like to come out of the closet about this season that we're in. You know, the reason for the season and all those kind of things that people do nowadays. and They get all carried away with cliches and making this story and that story and happy and sad and all that kind of junk. But I'm always the person who was looking for the other guy. You know, the one that didn't quite fit in. The square peg in the round hole or the triangle in the sphere. You know, the guy that was kind of like off to the corner just didn't seem to fit everywhere else. Because I was the wallflower when I was growing up. I was the ugly duckling. You know, the guy that was talked a lot, but just somehow didn't fit in with the crowd. You know, I was always the loner. And my family often called me the only child in the family of four. And God, in his word, said that he sets up the solitary in the family. And that gave me great comfort when I found it. And maybe that'll encourage you today, because in this season of Christmas and Hanukkah and Kwanzaa, and, you know, all the kind of holidays that are mixed up and in between, like Lent and Boxer Day and, you know, all the things that are going on with family and friends and getting all excited about, you know, Christmas presents or maybe nativity scenes or, God forbid, maybe you're one of those people that has to fight for the right to do what you want to do. Me, personally, I just kind of enjoy it. But this time of year, I always go through this kind of downtime. You know, it's kind of a... They, they call it like circadian or Akkadian, you know, kind of biorhythms that you go through that different times through the seasons, you know, throughout the year, you, your body goes through natural cycles, you know, just like you grow up, you get older and your body slows down. Well, believe it or not, in a year's worth of time, you kind of go through cycles where you have high energy levels and low energy levels and you have kind of a, you know, mood swings a little bit, not only because of the sunlight, but also because of just the way your body's built. God designed it that way. That's why there are seasons, and he said that they were put into place. That's why there's stars in the sky and the sun, and the earth spins, and it goes around the, the sun, and it also spins on its axis, so we have day and night. So there's different people that are built different ways. You know, like some, some people are not a morning person. You've heard that expression, and I happen to be one of those happy-go-lucky kind of guys that kind of enjoys the morning. <laughs> Well, during this year seasonal thing that I go through, I really, I'm not opposed to Christmas, and I enjoy it, and I set up things for people to enjoy and to look at, and, you know, I serve people lots of times. That's my biggest outlet for Christmas is to serve someone, because I really don't like Christmas for myself, personally, because I just don't, I don't really get into the shtick of, you know, getting this kind of, you know, present thing or whatever, because really don't get what I want. <laughs> I'm selfish, I want this, but I can't get it. No, I'm kidding. But the point being is that I like serving other people and I like, you know, like working behind the scenes or I remember when I was working in the restaurant, I loved Christmas even, or when I was working in the grocery store as a checker, certified grocer. I love this season because it worked hard, worked fast, you know, or like when I was doing Christmas folding up, you know, presents for people. Loved it. It was fun. And, it was always about doing something for someone else that when it came time for me, I really didn't kind of like being around. So my wife and I have really adapted to that pretty much because she likes to go visit her children and her family, which are in Utah, you know, and I've gone a couple times, you know, and it was like I did the, you know, kind of morning thing and Christmas thing, you know, and presents then and, you know, stockings and all that junk. And it was nice, you know, and everybody thought I had a good time and stuff, you know, and I did, you know, as much as I do for any time of this time of year, but what I really do is most of the time I spend my time alone. I like being alone. I'm a loner, you know, I, I tend to look at the sky and talk to God, you know, and I begin to see how he's moving in creation and different things and he's, him and I seem to have kind of a personal time, you know, when I'm alone because I choose to be alone with God. Now, I'll admit there are times where I'm kind of like burned out and I'll say, well, you know, Lord, I'd rather go do something else, you know, and sometimes I'm like you. I'll go do something else, you know, get involved in reading a book or watching a movie or even playing some stupid arcade game, you know. I'm just like you. 
flesh is flesh, and we are all built of the flesh. And so we enjoy, at times, feeding our flesh. Whether we admit it or not, we all indulge ourselves in some way. Some people I know, especially pastors, they like to indulge themselves in buying parties. <laughs> you know, that seems to be the thing of the modern day pastors is go out and get a Harley for some reason. I don't want one. <laughs> what I want to do is I want to enjoy the time and the seasons that we have, even as you should be doing. Because you see, you may not fit into your plans, your Christmas season, and that's okay. You see, God made you the way you are, as you are. There may be things that you need to change and rearrange in your life because maybe you figured out that you just don't fit in with the holiday seasons, but you don't need to be a downer about it either. You don't need to be like, you know, the real, you know, sore toe on the foot of the party, you know, that you're just kind of like making everybody else stumble over you. But you can be, even though it may not be your season, you can still be with the people and enjoy them for who they are. You could serve them in their need or serve them in their rejoicing. Now, I'm not telling you that you're always going to be happy about it. I'm just saying, recognize who you are, the way you are. Because if you are that kind of person, then it's okay to be alone. It's okay to not get into all the Christmas carols. Maybe you can't sing 12 days of Christmas or, you know, fa la 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 Or maybe you're very religious and you, you know, have to do Lent and you've got to fast and pray and, you know, deny yourself this, that, or the other thing. Or maybe, you know, you're kind of getting ready with your, you know, Hanukkah, you know, and you're going to light the nine-branch menorah, you know, which is supposed to be eight, but, you know, with the Shamash, who knows? <laughs> you got to figure that one out on your own. And play the dreidel, you know, and spin the top, you know, and get free gambling. <laughs> Uh, don't tell the Jews that. <laughs> well, oh well. Such as it is, you know, there's compromise everywhere. But that doesn't mean it's a bad thing. You see, God gives grace and mercy to us so that we would be merciful to one another. We would be graceful to each other. That we would begin to recognize that hey, it's okay sometimes to be who you are. Because when you're going through this life, you'll find that there are times where you don't feel good. Matter of fact, that's kind of where I'm at today. Now, you can't tell that I don't feel good by the way I'm acting right now, but quite frankly, I'm still trying to beat off a cold. We got dumped on with rain, and right before that, I kind of began to get a little bit of cold, and I've been fighting it ever since, and now my wife's kind of got it, you know? She's kind of like, you know, fighting it off, because she wants to go, you know, on vacation. Well, frankly, <laughs> It's kind of a struggle, you know, when you don't feel good to still share and relate where you're at, and honestly, you know, as I do on video, about how I feel, about how I relate to God, and about how you should. Because, you see, God already knows you where you're at. You can't hide the fact that you don't feel good or that maybe you got a bad attitude this season or maybe you're a real stump on the lump, you know, you know, that you just need to get over it, you know, and begin to gush out to joy instead of being just such a downer. But God knows where you're at. So you all need to do only one thing with Him and that's simply be honest. Sometimes Christians forget that it's okay to not be with the party. You know, the party line that says, oh, it's the reason for the season. No, it's not. It's a winter season, that's all. It just so happens that there's holidays during the season. So, of course, you can enjoy it or you cannot enjoy it. It's your choice. And it's always been what Jesus came here to do, to reveal the light, to reveal the truth, to reveal the way. God is not someone who's out there to set up some rules and regulations and beat you to death and make you enjoy something you don't enjoy. God never said you had to go out and, you know, go buy, you know, 30,000 presents for every single person that, you know, you could have ever imagined or somehow spend the money on Samaritan's Purse so that you could feed the poor in the world. No, that's just the world in its ways, you know. The world has a tendency of kind of like manipulating things to get you involved. But God doesn't. God uses His love, His mercy, and His forgiveness to bring you to Himself. 
he uses lifetime movies. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> this time of year, you know, you always knew what the story was going to be, because it's going to be, you know, family, happy ending, and all that kind of stuff, or, you know, overcoming obstacles. Hey, you know what? Sometimes you're not going to overcome an obstacle. Sometimes that obstacle is going to stop you dead in your tracks, and you just can't get over it. So what? Be real. Tell God. Let go. Let God be God. You know, it's kind of like that's what the point of what Jesus said. And when he came and gave to us glad tidings of great joy, which would be to all men on earth, that we would be able to be real with God. Because he already knows where we're at. We just don't know where we're at sometimes. Sometimes we're a little bitter, you know, because we've been carrying something around for too many years. Sometimes we're a little beat up because we've been trying to do too much. And now we're not ready for what's happening today. Sometimes we just need to stop and give up so that God could take over and be in control. That's the point I'm trying to make in all of this, in this time of year, in this time of season, because for me, often, I have wild goals that I always think that, oh, it'd be so wonderful if I could build a highway to heaven, you know, and drag every single person there. And the truth is, it ain't going to happen. A lot of people, quite frankly, are going to take the off-ramp to hell. <laughs> and they're going to speed off that sucker <laughs> as fast as they can go. And, you know, it's okay. If that's what they choose, then guess what? It's a freedom of choice. And sadly, till they get there, they won't know that they made their own choice. But even that, you have to let go. And you have to live your life according to where you're at. You have to be truthful with God. You have to be honest with God. You have to be able to say today, Hey, I don't feel good, God. Or, Hey, you know what, Jesus? I really am not up to this ministry thing right now, so I'm not going to do it. And you just do it. Being real. And you know what's going to happen when you do those things? God's not going to send a thunderbolt down like some Zeus, you know, and blast you. Or your circumstances in life aren't going to come unraveled and destroy you. If anything... God's going to love you for being truthful and honest of where you're at. Because God loves you. God loves you so much he gave his son. And because he did, he's trying to prove to you something that you don't get yet. And that's, he wants you to be where he's at. Because where you're at is as close to hell as you're going to get. This life that you're living is the worst possible environment for you. It's antagonistic to you. You weren't meant to be in this world. This is not your home, so don't get too comfortable because there's so much better still left yet to experience. And I know that sounds terrible, but really, the other side of death is the beginning of eternity. And it's going to be better than what you've ever lived before. Huh. And I don't mean reincarnation. Sorry, don't go there. <laughs> it don't work. But the point of it is, God has gone out of his way to prepare a place for you that where he is, you will be one day. And that though this may not be the time of year that you enjoy, or maybe it is, but for the one that isn't, you know, like me, maybe you can turn it around in some way for someone else. That, no, maybe you don't need to be Yuletide joy, you know, and kissing under the mistletoe. And maybe you don't want to deck the halls, you know, with Santa Claus or with the manger. And maybe you don't want to, you know, light the menorahs, you know, and do all their Hanukkah things with spinning tops and dreidels and chocolate. You know, but the point of it is, God is always with you, no matter where you go, and no matter where you are, God is always there. Jesus promised that he would never leave you nor forsake you. And though he may be silent, standing, watching you as you go through your tough times right now, and you know, maybe your sorrow or sadness, but not only did he say that he was bringing glad tidings of great joy, but that it would be to the whole world peace on earth, goodwill towards men. Because the time is coming when you will go home and you will be with the Lord. And at that point in time, all of this will be forgotten as though it were just a dream passing away. 
And so today, enjoy what you have, even if you have to say to God, I don't like it. This isn't exactly where I want it to be. This isn't the plans that I thought you had for me. This isn't what I expected. Be honest. Because when you are, God will be honest with you and he'll say, I know, I'm bringing you home.